thank you so much for uh, again uh, providing me this platform uh, to talk on uh, my research actually what i perform in last uh, five or six years so, sir yes am i audible am i audible hello yes sir yes sir audible sir okay fine so so uh, so today so today uh, i'll be talking over the challenges in realization of circular polarization in compact antennas so like uh, like those participants who attended the last lecture so i given uh, some of the basic idea about how we can develop the compact antennas and uh, one of the technique we are using in uh, uh, here actually which is the metamaterials uh, to realize the small antennas and uh, for that actually we started the circular polarization in 2017 uh, onwards so we we experienced so many uh, challenges actually and we try to address actually and uh, we have seen the traditional cp antennas which are going uh, which are used actually are uh, bulky as well as uh, the gain issue and other uh, other antenna parameters are there so we try to address all those things uh, by incorporating the new structures and uh, the new techniques correct so uh, this is uh, this is Uh, this is the building actually we are we are doing the research of rf and micro engineering so we have almost all the things now now let me about let me tell you about the research group so uh, currently seven phd students full time phd students are working with me and uh, four are already graduated and some of the part time students from isro and drdo they are they are working with me actually and uh, my lab is actually focused in uh, particularly antennas and compact antenna we are using the various techniques uh, like uh, meta materials composite right left handed transmission line approach we are also using the direct resonator for the miniaturization and uh, we are we are developing uh, some new kind of uh, meta material uh, structures for different application like absorber and filter as well the lab is particularly funded uh, by the drdo isro and scrb and other funding agencies so coming over the presentation outline so the flow will be like this uh, we'll start from the motivation and we'll try to just revise what we have seen in our last uh, lecture uh, the transmission line approach of the meta material and we'll we'll find the zor actually again and uh, we'll see some traditional circular polarized antenna and we'll try to find it out what are the problems uh then after we'll see the circular polarization and how what is what is the basic theory and what are the main parameter we supposed to uh, uh realize actually and then after i i will be talking about the challenges actually and finally what we develop in a lab i'll try to show correct okay. so this will be the usual flow now coming over the motivation so like if you see this uh, picture actually so here this is the lambda by 2 uh, dipole antenna correct and uh, if you talk about the radiation pattern correct so this is actually we require for uh, current uh, handle application like mobiles laptops and all the things uh, this is the only direction radiation pattern so uh, the theory is uh, quite clear for this lambda by 2 antennas and radiation mechanism and all the things we have seen in uh, various textbook and uh, particularly here the main issue is that we need to maintain the lambda by 2 okay and then only we are getting this kind of radiation pattern okay now later on when the concept of uh, uh, the infinity ground plane came so uh, this lambda by 4 wire can be can can be utilized actually as a, a suitable radiator for such kind of applications like uh, uh, like you can see you know uh, probably you can see on over the car correct there is a there is a wire kind of antennas is there nowadays uh, some compact antennas are also there so this was the idea so that car uh, the top the top of the car is uh, uh, maintaining the ground plane conditions and the lambda by four line these things and uh, almost we are getting the same kind of radiation pattern 
correct so in this way uh, the miniaturization was done means lambda by 2 now we have a lambda by 4 correct so these are all the linear polarized antennas correct and still many places these things are used now after that this mobile uh, this sense earlier uh, we have a, uh, uh, we have a spike kind of uh, over the top of the mobile and in that we have uh, this kind of uh, helix kind of antennas correct this helix kind of antennas providing uh, some axial ratio or circular polarization actually so for these kind of antennas this kind of uh, antennas and the mobile actually uh, when we are using mainly for the voice communication so the thing is the signal and all the things issue was uh, uh, was not uh, not there actually because the thing is uh, if these kind of antennas are there so definitely uh, we are going to receive from every direction and there is a no constraint about the polarization correct now later on when this technology uh, magician technology came so we are going to realize all the things, these kind of antennas, wire antennas, or any bulky kind of antennas over the uh, these microwave base laminates. And, <clears throat> and having the structures, uh, like the patch antenna, if you are uh, you know, very well known structure, if you see, it will provide you a directional radiation battery, correct? In a, in a certain direction. Whereas like if you can, if you can do some uh, different kind of uh, structures you can also maintain the omnidirection radiation pattern and what actually we did in our research we try to maintain these properties correct because for most of the handle application this is one of the parameter correct now the thing is like uh, when you see this picture so you will find uh, uh, mainly six antennas are uh, i put it over here and uh, you will find that uh, this is particularly for 4g uh, system where the MIMO concept is already there. It's like uh, what uh, what antenna, what mobile actually you're using, having uh, the multiple input, multiple output uh, technology actually. And uh, the thing is like that, uh, we are using the two antennas. One is a H polarized, another is V polarized, uh, horizontal and vertical polarized. And so we have a two different antennas. Then we have a GPS antenna, GSM and all, all sort of antennas actually, correct? It's distributed. Uh, over the surface of the mobile. Fine. So number of things are there, but the thing is these and all antennas are mainly uh, the linearly polarized antennas. Correct. Now coming over uh, the another very important device, which is a laptop. Correct. You will find uh, the same thing, and uh, uh, mainly we are using for these things so WLAN access, Bluetooth, and uh, GPS antenna for uh, the location based services. So the thing is, uh, this antenna is distributed uh, over the area of uh, the laptop. Correct. So now, what we need to do? What we what we have to what we have to do actually? So the first thing is, uh, this antenna should be uh, we we supposed to fit in a compact space. Now, uh, the thing is, when you are making uh, when you are making such kind of antenna which can accommodate in a compact space, will so create uh, several problems. We are going to sacrifice the antenna properties. So the second is that without sacrificing the antenna property, we are supposed to maintain this compactness. And later on, we will be talking about the CP circular polarization. Correct. So we need to think about uh, at the same time. So definitely, we shall be supposed to have uh, the stable four field pro properties, and uh, we we should have the multifunctional in the single antennas. Correct. And this should be compatible with the modern system. So these are the things we're supposed to keep in our mind. And then after that, you have to incorporate the circular polarization with these kind of antennas. Now the thing is, now the thing is, if uh, uh, let us first talk about uh, the compactness actually, what we, what we actually meant by the com, uh, compact antennas, correct? So let's say uh, we have an antenna, correct? You know, this picture you consider as an antenna. And let's say you have the area L cross W, correct? And uh, we want to operate it 5.2 gigahertz, correct? Now the thing is, on the same area, if we can manage the lower frequency, let's say 2.4 gigahertz. So this is one, this is a kind of miniaturization because you are accommodating the large wavelength in the same area. So how we will do? We are supposed to manage with the 
uh, the capacitor inductor or the structure actually you are going to develop. Now, other kind of thing is that we have an area of L cross W and it is operating 2.4 gigahertz, let's say. And we want to accommodate uh, these things in a very small area, let's say W by 6, W L by 16, area of W by W L by 16. And uh, it is again operating at 2.4 without sacrificing the antenna property. So how we can do these things? So in the last lecture, correct, those who are present actually, uh, I explained the concept of the composite right left handed Z over and all that. I'll, 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 try to, I'll try to explain a little bit again, okay? So that you will get some idea here. So the thing is like, how we will do the miniaturization? Now the, after that miniaturization, we are, having another challenge that what how we can incorporate the circular polarization correct so we'll be talking about that thing so this is actually what the miniaturization is fine now so what are the research, research objective we set actually for our research group those who are working in a particularly small antennas and the cp antennas so first we need uh, electrically small antennas correct and uh, then after it should be the uh, means it should be have the better performance as well as cost effective. And uh, uh, the possible solutions are, but uh, we realize that we, we, we completed one project, a sponsored project over these things also, uh, which is sponsored by SCRB. Uh, we got 2017 and it, we, we, we just uh, started this work. And when we started uh, the CP antenna, with the metal antennas, it was uh, somewhat challenged because uh, that time uh, very few research, very few research are there actually, and uh, like uh, uh, most of the papers and all the things are not up to the industry uh, as per the industry requirement actually. So then we started the things. Okay, we'll uh, do the circular production in metal antennas. So we came across many ideas actually. I'll try to share with you and successfully we design all the things so this is one of the solutions actually we are uh, we are claiming with the circular utilization circular utilization antenna with the crl chakra which is the metal antennas correct now if you see the conventional antennas correct so conventional antennas like uh, it is easy to compare with the patch actually nowadays so many things are there you can compare but the thing is we, we need to take a reference. So we started with the patch antenna and what we found that these are the problems actually, but our focus was this actual issue actually, correct? Now the thing is uh, for uh, the metamaterial CP antenna, correct? So the size was okay, means we can have the miniaturization up to 80% as compared to the conventional patch antenna. And we introduced uh, the actual ratio as well, correct? By incorporating the new structures, new techniques and all but there is a problem actually because uh, we all know that uh, the gain and all the things is directly proportional to the effective uh, aperture area of the antennas correct so when we are going to shrink the area definitely we are compromising with the gain so the thing is like uh, the gain we are let's say we are getting in a comp uh, patch antenna let's say uh, 3 or 4 dv so in a metamaterial antennas we are getting around 1 dv 0.5 dv so this is not sufficient and not not for any kind of application, I would say. We, we require at least 2DB gain uh, to run the applications, correct? And uh, the efficiency problem as well, correct? Because these are the metallic antennas and the very small antennas. So whatever the power is going to be lost is the only losses. And uh, sometimes we use the substrate also, the fire 4 and all the things. So these things, these, these were the problem actually. Now, uh, we, we came across a very nice solutions actually. and. Uh, uh, we reported the outcome of this antenna is IEEE um, antenna propagation magazine last year. And uh, the thing is, with this uh, antenna, actually, uh, we address uh, the two issues. One is again, another is efficiency bandwidth. And along with that, uh, we provided the solutions for the circular polarization as well. Correct. So I will be talking about uh, mainly this, uh, uh, this work. Okay, and before that, we'll try to understand the basic basic things about the circular polarization and all. Correct. Now, uh, just recalling the things uh, what I told in the last lecture. So the thing is, like uh, we compare the metamaterial 
versus uh, the patch antenna 2.4 gigahertz so if you see this patch antenna correct and if you if, let's say if you want to design at 2.4 gigahertz so definitely you have uh, you have very well known equations or nowadays we have the calculator as well we can find it out the length and width and uh, we can we can design we can synthesis this antenna no issue now when we are talking about the meter metal antenna we supposed to think about the composite right left handed transmission line approach and uh, based on that we are exploiting the zwar property and i will be talking about these things and uh, the thing is like here you can see uh, uh, particularly what we uh, what we did actually we put it a v as actually here and these are the metamaterial structure correct and uh, what we found actually that uh, i'll show the results so before that uh, uh, we make uh, the equivalent circuit actually and uh, we validated over the ads that uh, the things are quite uh, satis uh, satisfied satisfying actually and uh, what we found actually that we compared both the antennas and we found that bandwidth and the efficiency is almost uh, comparable with a patch antenna because uh, with the metamaterial antennas this is one of the issue actually and the gain was little bit down as compared to the patch antenna but it is sufficient to run the application fine and if you see the radiation pattern we are not going to alter or going not going to destroy the fourth properties it is almost same what the patch antenna is providing so we we uh, we were uh, uh, confident uh, this things when we have seen this uh, result that yes okay we can do the things but only issue is that if you require the high gain antenna how we can do the things correct and later on that the uh, the, uh, the big uh, challenge was that how we incorporate the cp property because if you see a literature mainly uh, mainly well known techniques uh, people are using still and lot of applications run on these kind of techniques only right how will we we how in literature you will find that uh, many kind of uh, structures antennas came actually uh, but having some problem and issues there yeah, i'll address those things and we we try to resolve all those things actually now so coming over uh, the things um, uh, the comparison part correct so if i compare so i designed this two antennas over the same substrate uh, 4.5 permittivity and the 10 delta 0.002 correct now if you see the comparison here correct so the first one is a patch antenna another is a uh, metamaterial antenna which is a crls based antenna and n is equal to 0 stand for here the zwr property correct now the thing is like uh, this 2.4 we fixed actually and what we found that uh, the radiating path size is 21 cross 24 and the gain is 2.5 degree radiation visibility so this is quite actually acceptable results and it is at compared to the patch antenna this is uh, almost uh, almost half actually or um, like if we calculate the miniaturization in percentage so this is coming out 84.7 percentage correct so this was one of the achievement now after that uh, we'll see that uh, the subcritical property but before that I, I i just brush up all the concept actually about the compact antennas because we are going with the compact antenna only. So the idea is here actually that uh, we utilize the composite right-left-handed transmission line, and uh, this is this is a unit cell, correct? And this is actually an interstellar capacitor. This is a shunt inductor, and this is a VR. Now the based on these things, we have a equivalent circuit, correct? And we have a dispersion diagram. Now if you see the dispersion diagram, you will find the omega naught. This is what this is the Z1, correct? Zero order resonator. Now at beta is equal to zero, you have a frequency, and which is independent of these things. Means we can indirectly say this is an independent of the physical size of the resonator. Now we have the two conditions: one is the unbalanced and balanced. So if uh, the shunt and series frequencies are the same, so we are showing the balance. Otherwise, uh, this is unbalanced. So shunt means that this these two parameters and series are these two parameters. Where CL and LL are the key key. Parameter which are going to decide your uh, these frequencies actually correct. These are the uh, these are the sum of the formulas by which you can calculate the dispersion and the um, uh, characteristic impedance, and the shunt and series resonance could be determined by this formula. Correct. Now uh, just focus over the uh, m is equal to zero means zero over point. So here this is a balanced case actually we took 
and for lambda by two line. Like you can experiment with lambda by four line as well. Correct. And you can find it out. This will this will be a completely new study. So um, please try. Correct. Because this is a just just a transmission line concept, and we can we can uh, we can re we we should recheck actually these things. Now this is actually done with the lambda by two and for the balanced transmission. Also here here if you see at omega naught particularly we at these things beta is zero means what beta is zero means lambda is infinity. Correct. Now the thing is, what we can conclude that that m is equal to zero, that is independent resonant uh, resonator physical length. Correct. It means that that at particular size uh, or the structure actually of the area, we can incorporate any kind of frequencies by changing the C L N value actually. Correct. And it will always provide you the normal field components, and hence you are getting. Only direction addition, and this is one of the important property, and this is the claim actually because in most of the application, and we require this property, and sometimes we require a directional property as well. So, particularly from only direction to directional radiation pattern, we can manage. Correct. I'll show you these things. Now, the thing is, uh, let let us talk about uh, how these antennas are radiating. Correct. So, like if you talk about the microchip antennas. So particularly two sides are radiating, and the two sides are not contributing in a corporate with these things, and the radiation pattern is like that. Whereas for the CRLS based antenna, we have we have we have uh, the magnetic surface current like that, and we we can expect a four field uh, four field radiation this thing radiation pattern uh, like an only direction radiation pattern, correct? So this is this is the paper actually we compare these things and we taken the idea actually. Now the thing is, uh, how one can do this thing? So we have to do unit cell parameter, dispersion diagram, optimization, and the cascading, and then uh, we have to uh, make the things correct. So this is already well explained in my last lecture, so I will not go in a detail. Correct. So let us try to understand the metamaterial classification because it will help to understand further that how we can uh, uh, how we can load it and how we can find it out. These uh, CP properties. So this is mainly based on the CRLS based antennas, metamaterial loading and metal metal material. You can uh, there are similarities here, and then we have the metal surfaces. So here you can see there are typical examples are there, and particularly when we are talking about mainly CRLS transmission line structures. So the thing is, um, uh, we can claim the compactness and all the thing, but we are loading uh, the gain and radiation behind the. Whereas uh, when we are putting the loading element, so we the intention uh, is most of the time that we want to uh, we want to develop a, uh, a notch response or we want to suppress some kind of uh, surface uh, surface uh, currents or maybe uh, getting the extra resonance point. Uh, so that could be that could be acting as an antenna. So uh, having a certain uh, boundary condition and all, we can claim that this particular resonance is also. Uh, work as a radiator, correct? And then after we have a metal surfaces, correct? So the loading of AMC, EBG, and RIS people are trying to increase again by suppressing the surface current and all, correct? So we also opted this approach uh, in my coming uh, design, correct? And uh, this is the methodology. One can, if somebody want to do the things, he can opt this thing. Like he's supposed to find it out what actually have like. If somebody wants to do the compact antennas with the CP, so what is what he supposed to do? He supposed to find it out uh, what ideas are going on, correct? And then after uh, he supposed to take uh, the structures, correct? What are the structures? What is some popular restriction and need to understand the physics? What the things are happening? Then uh, he can use as a radiator, and uh, you can decide the initial parameters. Then after you can decide. Uh, uh, the materials, what are going to use, emission softwares, and uh, metamaterial load cells you can choose actually. Correct. And then after there are different analysis you need to perform when you are doing with this approach only. And uh, we have uh, we, we you have to do some validation of the studies by parametric studies and plotting the EMH field. And uh, for performing improvement, what you can do these are the some new techniques actually. So one can utilize actually these 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 new techniques to uh, find it out uh, the better gain and radiation efficiency. Like 
artificial magnetic conductor is very popular lp2 cp converter right now we are doing actually and we uh, we got very good uh, response like particularly we are focusing on lp2 cp converter and uh, we successfully design uh, such antennas which can uh, which can actually provide this lp2 cp things correct it's really very beneficial and then after measurement all the things correct so let's talk about the circularly polarized the traditional circularly polarized antennas correct so this is all about uh, some of the compact antennas correct i uh, i given you some glimpse correct and uh, i already told you in a detail in a last lecture correct so the thing is what we did actually um, we used uh, this metamaterial antennas we incorporated the cp correct and uh, we faced uh, so many things actually so many problems i'll address this in. but before that we should we should know that what are the traditional circularly polarized antennas correct so the thing is if you're talking about the circularly polarized antennas traditional one so it comes with the narrow band and the broad band fine now this is a uh, helical antennas correct a very well known antennas correct it operates in a uh, two modes correct uh, normal mode and the extreme mode Fine. Based on the circumference uh, dimension, and uh, is uh, we need to compare actually the lambda with the lambda actually certain range it is uh, working as an axial antenna otherwise uh, distance. So so this is one of the antenna which used earlier to realize the circular polarization and was very famous actually. Correct. And uh, the thing is like uh, the mainly issue uh, was there uh, it having uh, the narrow band and uh, Uh, the gain problem and the gain problem is uh, very natural actually because because we are decomposing the things and we are maintaining the phase degree and angle degree so this is creating a problem now people uh, find it out the solutions uh, for uh, the broadband means uh, that time this uh, broadband is one of the challenge so what they did actually they 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 put it a gradual uh, change in a circumference so we all know tapering and all the things correct so tapering uh, this things tapering is a very well known concept in the microwave engineering and we are gradually matching with the impedance we are gradually actually matching the impedance correct so particularly here the input uh, reflection coefficient is done with this gradual change in the circumference of the helical structure so this provides actually what the broadband nature but the same issue was there the gain and other things uh, but still the things that people are using for the um, For uh, for for application where the high power are involved and all the things, and later on uh, on printed uh, these things, the spiral structure, the spiral planar structure was very famous, and uh, so many means uh, similar kind of structures in literature you can find. And uh, the idea is that uh, they are trying to manipulate the electric and magnetic field such in a way so that orthogonally exist. Okay. so these are the these are the these are the some traditional structures actually by which we are trying to get the circular polarization correct now now the thing is uh, when we are talking about the circular polarization so there must be some applications correct that is why we are talking about and we must be very much worrying about because uh, the thing is nowadays if you see uh, the research paper and the current research people are shift, going to shift to the circular polarization and all Because there is a lot of things, lot of problems actually in real time environment. We need to address all those things. So one of uh, very important uh, uh, techniques actually, like multiple input and multiple output antenna system actually, uh, in a communication. Now the thing is, people are trying to incorporate the CP as well, correct? And it is really very really beneficial if we, if we try to combine these two. So this is one of the gap actually. I'm telling you, you can you can start the work in this area also. It's high scope. correct now what are the direct use of the cp antennas so one is a uh, this things uh, wireless application like in your mobiles uh, the multiple input multiple output wireless systems wlan and gps system and uh, portable devices then wideband application and satellite communications correct and in satellite communication in all the things we are still using the helical antennas correct so the thing is uh, working further on the new techniques will definitely uh, benefit to these areas correct now coming over the cp application so one of the thing is uh, the polarization losses due to the misalignment 
this is one of the problem actually if your antenna is vertically placed receiver is horizontally placed on some other angle so you might be you might be losing some of the information correct and there is a phasing issues as well correct then uh, mitigation of for the multi path propagation like uh, you can see like when we are working in a real time environment like uh, uh, like in a city like if you can if you if you take an example correct we have building trees and uh, all uh, all items actually so when the propagation happens so the uh, this reflection and all the things are happening and uh, and uh, this creates a problem because uh, like uh, non non line of sight uh, communication actually in the communication engineering we are uh, we are saying like that so this for n o n n l o s the thing is that uh, the and the receiving antenna audio signal is going to means uh, uh, going to accept as well as the reflected signal is also uh, uh, means going to accept so this create a problem and uh, uh we can we can address uh, by incorporating with the circuit polarizations and definitely one is a reduce reduced effect of the weather condition and provide the large signal propagation correct now this is a, one of the photograph actually i have taken from the ca balanis is they try to under they try to explain the things that how the things are uh, working actually let's say if you have the two polarization correct means one is a incident wave another is Uh, uh, in polarization of the antennas, correct. So the thing is, if these are aligned, so PLF will be one, correct. If this is at some angle, so this will be cos square psi phi, and if this is a ninety degree, so this will be zero. So in this condition, you are not going to get the signal actually. Whereas you have to maintain this situation or this situation. Correct. So linearly polarized uh, antennas are creating us such uh, these kind of problems actually, particularly the polarization and all. So earlier days you remember that uh, when Yagi Ura antenna uh, was used actually to receive the uh, this uh, Doordarshan channel. Correct. So we are aligning. Uh, we are we are going to align uh, the Yagi Ura antenna in a particular direction. So we can get the signal. So this this is the idea actually. Correct. Now the thing. Now the thing is, like you can replace the Yagi Ura antenna with circular polarized antennas. You have the lot of tech, lot of uh, ideas and techniques. Correct. Now let me talk about some basic idea of the polarization. So the pol when we are talk about the polarization, so it means that uh, we were talking about or we are actually doing with the reference of the electrical direction. Correct. Let's say if I am saying the Y polarized wave. Correct. What does it mean? That I am talking about the E Y. Ah, uh, or electric field in a y direction. Correct. Fine. So, like uh, it was, uh, it was came uh, like with the electrical polarization, and uh, this is the equation actually. So here, the local this is the local equation of net electric field, which resemble actually the uh, ellipse equation. Correct. And uh, the thing is, uh, particularly if you can see, there are the two component E X and E Y, and there is an angle between these two. Correct. So when you have uh, these kind of situation, correct? When uh, two field components, correct? Ah, uh, maybe orthogonal or not, correct? Or with that same phase, correct? So definitely you have some locus, correct? And uh, particularly uh, for this, actually, the locus is uh, it, it forms the electrical equation. Now, uh, there are another parameter is axial ratio, which measures of the. Uh, Electricity of the polarization, correct? And this could be calculated with 20 log E max over E one. A very simple formula, correct? So uh, the thing is, uh, the linear and circular polarizations are the two special cases of the electrical polarization. Actually, correct? Like if you see this picture, so you will find there are two field components. One is the green, and another is blue, and they are and this is a time uh, time varying situation actually. So at the last, if you see uh, after some time, you will find this will trace a ellipse. Correct, because it depends over what is the magnitude of uh, these electrical fields and what is the phase. Correct. Right? So this is the best equation actually. You can uh, you can write a MATLAB code and you can find it out uh, what kind of different shapes you will be getting. Correct. Right? Now talking about the linear polarization, so the condition like that uh, in between. Uh, These two components, they should be n-pi. 
correct when it should be aligned ah uh, so the thing is uh, the thing is uh, like if you see here this picture will be more clear to you this is a kind of situation it's in a particular direction your fields your uh, fields are oscillating correct let's say ey direction correct so here the thing is uh, if e1 is equal to zero then we are saying this is vertically polarized if e2 is zero we are saying this is the horizontal polarization correct so this is uh, this is actually uh, the linear polarization what we are uh, what we can experience actually now the second is uh, the second case of the electrical polarization is a circular polarization correct and uh, the condition is like that these two field components should be equal correct and uh, the angle between the phase difference should be the pi by 2 correct in generalized form we have given and with the sign you can you can take uh, as a clockwise or counter clockwise correct now if you see uh, this picture actually so what you will find these two electric fields which is the orthogonal as well as the phase difference the pi by 2 correct so at the last they are forming a very nice circle correct they are forming a very nice circle actually correct and this is what actually we require fine but in practice actually the thing it is really very difficult to maintain the equal magnitude and all the things so that is why in practice if we uh, you can see in most of the paper they are taking uh, the axial ratio below 3d correct so there is a engineering tolerance actually we supposed to take now uh, the thing is if you see so uh, like if i conclude this thing the circular polarization so it has two orthogonal linear components then uh, uh, the, there must be same magnitude as well as uh, Uh, the time phase difference of odd multiple of 90 degree so here you can see like uh, this picture actually picture number a if you see these two field components are there correct these are orthogonal correct these are orthogonal but there is a no phase difference correct so this is this this particular thing will not provide you any kind of circular polarization what you need to do you need to maintain a pi by 2 phase shift between these two waves correct and when you are doing these things so you are getting a nice circular polarization like this correct like this animation i am trying to uh, show you correct so finally uh, this things uh, this is the equation actually i have already explained this things and uh, these are the benefits correct that higher link reliability easier installation immunity from faraday effect as atmospheric condition and mitigation from multiplier the same thing correct now coming over the two special cases of uh, the circular polarization one is a uh, left handed uh, circular polarization other is right handed circular polarization so here you can easily uh, easily uh, visualize if you trace uh, this cursor so you will find this is a right handed circular polarization whereas if you trace this things it will be provide you the right handed circular polarization so this was the left handed and this is the right handed correct now the thing is uh, for 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 mainly some particular applications like space and defense we are uh, we are providing uh, so we are setting actually a kind of polarization correct now how you can how how you can get these things correct like if you see the loop antenna very famous antennas correct a, a form of the wire antenna actually so if you if you if you make a field like from here so it will be the current direction will be like this correct current direction will be like this and this is what this is lcp whereas for this case the current will be this things like this correct so this is rcp so you can e you can very easily realize this rcp and lcp based on the what is the surface current direction similarly uh, in a patch actually if you cut down the corners like this so you are getting the rcp otherwise lcp correct so this is a very well known techniques correct people uh, in initial days people are using but these are all are antennas are really very bulky actually correct and if you if you if you dare to think that you can use these uh, antennas in your mobile you forget about because these are like designing at 2.5 or uh, 900 megahertz or 1800 megahertz it is quite acquiring a big size correct big area sorry so uh, the thing is like uh, is quite actually uh, uh, means uh, not acceptable means uh, like this so people are uh, managing with the linearly polarized antenna and they trying to manage 
the linear and vertical polarization in the same device so they can they cannot they are not going to lose the signal actually so this was the thing now if you talk about the advantages correct so we i already talked about uh, the advantages like here if you see this picture correct so what you will find this is the transmitting mode this is the transmitter and this is the receiving mode correct so the thing is if uh, if this is a linear linear polarization or vertical polarization so so the field will be like this if you are considering the time harmonic wave correct and it is like this a line you will be appearing correct like this correct if this is a linearly polarized antenna then it is fine other if this is a horizontally polarized so you forget about the signal and all because you are not going to get any kind of things now in a same uh, the things uh, if you if you realize this antenna transmitting mode as a with the cp property circularly polarized property so what you will find that like at the receiving point any kind of antenna let's say for the horizontal polarized or vertical polarized or any or any angle okay so the waves are coming such in a way is that that it will when will it will be incident or impinges over the receiving mode receiving antenna correct so we are getting the signal actually we are not going to lose the signal correct the because there is a chance actually that uh, so at at some particular time time let's say if you are using the linearly polarized antenna the alignments are uh, uh, the fields are aligned actually and you are getting the uh, full information correct so this is one of the thing now when some things uh, come with advantage uh, advantage there must be some disadvantage also correct and uh, my research group is actually mainly fo focusing over these things that how we can how we can minimize actually these advantage disadvantages correct so first is a low gain correct why this is low gain as power is distributed in the cp radiation correct because we are going to distribute the thing ex and ey we are maintaining the phase and all correct so it is a quite high chance that we should get the low gain second is that loss of 3 db power correct means we are expecting the 3 db power half power at least correct and uh, when other side is linearly polarized correct so this is one of the problem is both the antenna cp is an okay otherwise if linearly polarized antenna so 50% power you we may lose correct correct so this is one uh, graphical representation actually correct which confirm these things correct if you have uh, the linear polarization here correct so the 50% reduction is there and if you have the both the side the cp antenna so you can manage this loss of 3 db power now coming over the challenges actually so what what we faced and what actually still we are working on these things the first is to maintain the amplitude and phase with the maximum allowable error with our desired operating bands correct it is really very difficult this thing amplitude and phase because the thing is if you see the conventional structures so i mean the structure itself uh, tell you, tells you that yes uh, the phase and all the things are we are this things doing but the thing is that when you are dealing with the traditional antennas traditional structures it acquiring the large space correct we cannot we cannot actually over the large space ah this era actually having uh, this handle devices and everything we want to keep in a small area like this we want to keep in a pocket bags and all correct so definitely we should not actually carry antenna alone to run these applications correct uh the second is the miniaturization like when we are talking about the miniaturization again there is a big challenge actually correct so two orthogonal components in a very small area is really difficult the third one is designing a unidirectional cp antenna is again a big problem actually with cp antenna right because uh, this things uh, omidirectional radiation pattern correct because you have the two field components you have to manage such in a way that it should be it should be resemble the electrical dipole correct then only you can expect the omidirectional radiation pattern and it is it is really very difficult and uh, that is why we came across one solution this z word property is very nice property and we can exp uh, exploit further actually uh, for different applications correct then after pattern reconfigurability difficult it is difficult to maintain the orthogonality 
of the component for all switch beams actually correct so mainly uh, uh, among these four challenges correct we try to address the omega action radiation pattern with cp property and miniaturization correct these things we manage actually uh, these things we manage now the thing is let us try to understand some uh, other way around this uh, thing so particularly uh, the uh, the equivalent uh, elementary dipole sources for the two types of circularization could be understood like this that uh, let's say if you have uh, the uh, realizing the cp property i'm saying that you it uses the two orthogonal electric or magnetic dipoles with 90 degree phasing like definitely when we are when, when we are going to do with uh, these antennas so we will be talking about in terms of mode t mode or tm mode correct Ah, better to know about the modes, and then after we can realize uh, the CP. It is uh, quite uh, means acceptable because the thing is, uh, if you have the mode, you have a certain electric and magnetic field, the bunch of electric and magnetic field, and what kind of uh, one, what kind of field component you are playing, you need to address properly. Correct. So here, uh, this is one idea that uh, here that when you are using uh, electric or magnetic dipole, means anyone, anyone like. If you are using electric or magnetic, you are supposed to put in orthogonal, correct? Or T or T M. The second is it should be collinear. This J Z and M Z are the surface current, uh, surface current density. And here, if you are using both, let's say T and T M, correct? So you need to need not to worry about this ninety degree on uh, these things. But at the same time, you are supposed to incorporate these two modes. So mainly. Uh, my research group uh, doing these things in a DR, direct transmitter, because uh, that uh, in in DR actually we can maintain the two different modes. Correct. So this is one thing. Now, if you if I say the first uh, example of the first kind of uh, uh, these things phenomena here, so these are the these are the some of the example. Correct. Where the T or TM mode only is used. Correct. Ah, so here we like very well known which is the cross slot. Then after that, we have the microstick patch, correct, like that, two feeding structure. Then the cross dipole, like this, correct. So this is what this is. These and these antennas are using either TM or T, correct. Means both the modes are not going to be used. Otherwise, you need to think uh, some some other uh, techniques actually. Now the second type, this antenna, which is where we are using the T and TM both. Correct, and we are not worrying about this 90 degree and all. Like here, helix antenna, you cannot say these things. Let's see where is the 90 degree and all the things because we are going to merge these two modes. Fine, and uh, this loop antenna as well. Correct, the same thing is happening here. You cannot find which component or which lines actually perpendicular are making this kind of thing because here these two modes are collinear. Correct. So these are the two things you supposed to you supposed to think over these two points a very fundamental thing. We just talking about the 90 degree phase shift and all those things, correct? Right? But uh, the the picture is also with uh, uh, with this kind of uh, te techniques as well, correct? Right? Now these are the some geometries actually, correct? Right? I put it. I believe you have seen in many papers. I have not given references actually. Because these are the very well-known papers. So, like this thing, using the power divider, we can introduce the CP by cutting the this thing. So, we can disturb the electric or magnetic field. And this is a spiral. And this kind of antenna falls in T and DM. Correct. Now, here, if you see with the DR, actually, we provided the two feeds. Correct. Here, yeah, at the 90 degree. And if you talk about this, this also actually uh, the case two, which is T plus T. Correct. Now let me talk about uh, some of uh, my work actually. Correct. So what actually we did. Correct. Now, so this is one of the paper actually. Correct. You can or you can find it out. And uh, still, this is early access. Not got the volume number and all the things. So, but still, you can download this paper from the IEEE. So the thing is. The first thing is, if you talk about the challenges, correct? So the inclusion of the circular polarization without sacrificing the antenna parameter. This is one of the things. Correct. We have to, we have to, we have to incorporate the CP, but we should not disturb other parameters. Correct. This is one challenge. Ah, we we fixed. 
then after uh, then after what contribution we made actually correct in this area that uh, cp radiation and the gain more than 5.5 dvi and for theta plus minus 45 degree this is one of the challenge because with this large beam wave to maintain the cp it is quite a challenging task correct so we 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 uh, we address these these things actually in this design correct so finally uh, this is the antenna structure i'll explain in a detail so we have a virtual ground correct concept we have the rectangular strip which is working as a left handed inductance we have the circular ring which providing the right handed inductance and the feed and the sma connector and this particular structure is providing the vertical ez component is providing the ez component fine and particularly we 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 try to manage uh, c and l and this is mainly the crl structure so we operated at z or mode zero order resonator resonating mode actually correct so the thing is the the beauty of the zor we i already explained uh the thing that it is going to provide you the only rational direction pattern correct now what we did actually at the bottom side we kept a partial ground plane correct and we know by when, when we are using the partial ground plane it means we are com we are compromising with the capacitor and hence the we can expect a good amount of bandwidth correct and we put it intentionally a circular split ring resonator correct and if you see it is going to provide you the ex component correct so it means what actually this zor antenna we design is we have uh, we have we, uh, our research group already have the expertise over this thing that how we can develop the zor antennas by the crl approach or epsilon negative approach like that correct we we, uh, we reported so many things actually over this and then after uh, the thing was how we can accommodate this kind of fields correct which is that over the plane correct i'll explain a little bit again this sense so this was the idea actually correct and uh, and after that what we realized that the gain and all the thing is not uh, not up to the mark it is again is uh, uh, about uh, 2.5 or 3 db correct so what we introduce a new kind of amc which is artificial magnetic conductor and uh, the property of artificial magnetic conductors is like that it provides the phase shift of zero degree so this is now we clubbed all those things correct we clubbed all those things and what we have we have this structure this is a fabricated bond correct and it's providing what the circularly polarized radiation in a broadside direction correct so this is uh, this is the overall picture correct now if you see here so the ar bandwidth is around 12% at 3.5 which is a sub 6 gigahertz band and the gain is 5.62 dbi and the compactness is around 38.7% so this is the thing actually correct and as compared to the conventional antennas correct now coming over the details actually correct so this is the overall picture i have given to you now how we perform these things correct i want to uh, discuss these things so as i told you this thing that we have a virtual ground this virtual ground plays a very important role because that that is why we can we can uh, be able to keep this partial ground plane otherwise it is uh, uh, it, it creates a problem actually because uh, like uh, when you have the uh, uh, partial ground plane correct so sometimes you were you will be getting the very uh, wide bandwidth but there is a other problem like gain and the radiation efficiency and all the thing because there is a one another reason is that we supposed to complete the circuit as well correct like in normal circuits we are completing the circuit now in, at the microwave uh, this things we supposed to complete the circuit as well so we purposefully put it on virtual ground over here and this virtual ground actually providing uh, here that's the completing actually the eng the epsilon negative transmission line approach as well like if you, if you see here this is a mainly feed line connected to the circular ring so this is providing you L, lr which is left uh, right handed inductance correct and there is no gap or no capacitance actually is there ah 
so it is directly connected with the thin rectangular strip to the ground correct so this is a shunt inductance this is actually what this is a shunt inductance fine so this polar structure i can i am claiming here this is a eng epsilon negative transmission line based structure correct and this will provide uh, this will provide me a single resonance point correct this will provide me a single resonance point and that is that is actually zero r zero to all resonator and if you if i plot this will be all vertical as i showed in the last slide correct now at the bottom side correct we have a split ring resonator correct ring sorry so here you can find the gap actually correct so here you have some electric fields correct you will find some electric electric field which is in a plane as well as it is going to uh, compensate the capacitance which is which is actually uh, down due to this ground ground plane also correct so this was the idea now we club actually these two these are the design parameter all the design parameter we have and uh, and the thing is we did develop over the apart for substrate a very uh, freely available uh, substrate actually anyone can purchase it's very low cost and uh, this is what we did we we maintain here the eng transmission line plus uh, circular split ring we club these two and what we have seen because this is the eng based structure so it definitely provide a small size and what we found this is 0.26 lambda not into 0.16 lambda not at 3.5 gigahertz so now from here i i i i got the idea actually that yes uh, this sense this antenna will provide me other linearly polarized properties whereas adding an extra elements here will provide you orthogonal component correct so now i have orthogonal component but the problem is that uh, the phase actually because these two components coming with a arbitrary phase so the thing is uh, when when we simulated this things what we found that uh, the phase between these two orthogonal components is governed by the radius of this split ring resonator actually correct and the reason is uh, uh, quite clear actually when you are when we are increasing the radius or diameter of this thing so indirectly you are you are you are maintaining you are actually uh you are trying to playing with this gap actually and uh, the thing is like uh, when you have uh, uh, this kind of situation so definitely there there must be some different electrical length and hence you have um uh, a phase change correct so in this way uh, the things could be correlated like uh, like orthogonal component is okay but uh, the phase variation due to this electrical length actually so by changing the electrical length like circumference correct we are maintaining the phase between these two or some components finally finally we got a nice uh, circular polarization actually circularly polarized property with this structure correct so we 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 run uh, several parametric studies and all the things correct uh, to to study the what what particular parameter is responsible for what actually uh, the idea is actually quite clear correct i believe this is clear to you also that we club the zor plus like you are free to use any other kind of structure as well like you can use a slot correct you can you can you can use some slots also but the thing is you need to find it out the way that how you can uh, play with uh, the phase correct this is one of the thing now the thing is if you see the design stages correct if you see the design stages so what you will find what you will find that particularly I, i will be talking about the number 2 and number 3 stage number 1 and 2 3 so here there is a no back split ring ring whereas in uh, third stage we kept a ring correct so the thing is like that if you don't have uh, this ring so we are getting the resonance around 3.5 gigahertz correct fine whereas when you are put at this thing so you have you have an extra resonance around the 3.7 5 gigahertz correct now the thing is because we are we 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 matched actually in a such a way that it is going 10 db down that is it looks like otherwise we are initially get the two bands correct we will manage such in a way where it should be coming at these are called antenna engineering actually correct now the thing is uh, 
the unit cell size is 0.26 lambda naught into 0.16 lambda naught at 0.5. Bandwidth is 15.44 percent, and the AR bandwidth is 7.5 percent. It's quite acceptable, correct? For some running some uh, applications. Correct. Now talking about the equivalent circuit, the equivalent circuit is really very easy. Correct. And the thing is, uh, we 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 try to um, we try to got um, idea actually some previously published paper as well because people already performed uh, uh, the equivalent circuit for the speed resonator and uh, very well known structures. So we 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 thought that time we'll, uh, let, let us use those um, equivalent circuit what is already reported in the literature. And hence, we can verify as well. We can we can verify those things what is reported in, uh, in those papers also. So uh, what we found this paper actually is really very uh, very good. It's published in two thousand five, and IEEE MTD. And uh, what we what what we uh, taken here we taken the equivalent circuit of this uh, circular distributing ring, correct? So for these things, this is the equivalent circuit. We just directly taken from this paper, correct? Okay, and uh, for our antenna, the ZOR antenna, we develop a equivalent circuit here. Correct. Right. This is a quite easy. I can uh, I can tell you this thing. Like uh, this is a field. Then we have a ring. So we model as L1 and LR. These two things. Then after we have a shunt inductance. Shunt inductance is this thing LL, and there is a gap actually. A gap. This thing upper and lower part. So uh, we we put it as CV. Capacitance, correct, and CR, correct. And in this way, you can find there is no CR. That is why we are claiming that this is the ENG of channel negative transmission line. Now, for this structure, we already have the formula derived by this uh, uh, this paper actually nicely they derived. And uh, for this structure, we derive the ZOR formula, correct. Now, we what we did actually we club these two, and after clubbing these two, correct, you are getting a complete equivalent circuit. Now, what you can do. You will you will be getting some initial parameters, uh, initial uh, this frequency, sorry, correct, so that you can run the simulation. Because running the simulation, it is not like arbitrary game. Correct, you just put the thing and you just run the simulation. You need to find some analysis before that. So the thing is, we have a well, uh, good formulas here, correct, which can provide you the frequencies and all the things, correct. So uh, we we already verified this thing on ADS also, correct, and this is quite acceptable. But I'll show you this thing. Now, after that, uh, the thing is, we uh, we checked the metamaterial behavior as well. That this is actually ENG or not, correct? So we run the different simulation. Like particularly, our focus was this thin strip because this providing the LL, correct? And when we are changing, so this this is this uh, uh, antenna resonance, particularly ENG antenna resonance is keep shifting. If you see shifting, but the thing is. When you are changing the dimension of this circular ring, there is a no change in this thing. Why? Because, because the reason is that the shunt element, this is shunt element actually, correct, responsible for the change. Ah, uh, this is like the open-ended structure, correct. So, as the formula I have shown you, correct, that uh, this resonance only depends about the Shunt inductance, correct. That is why, if you increase here, if you increase these things, be with or whatever, you are not going to get the change here. Correct. So this is one of the beauty actually of the ENG antennas. Correct. Now only parameter responsible here, this shunt inductance. Correct. Now after that, uh, we plotted the uh, dispersion diagram and we found we found means we verified that this resonance that 3.5 around is the ZOR frequency, correct. So this is the cross validation. Then after we we plotted the permittivity permeability by uh, this Bloch socket analysis, and we found this structure of this unit cell providing this thing. So there are a lot of validation we we perform, correct. So that uh, uh, when somebody read these things, this work, correct. So that it's uh, he's he's supposed to get a better insight that how the things are working actually, correct. And you supposed to also perform the thing. There, you must be carry out a uh, number of validations. Correct. Then only you you can you can confirm and then you can definitely go for the applications. Correct. Now the thing is, uh, we'll be focus over uh, the final antenna here. And uh, the thing is, 
like uh, what we did actually we uh, try to uh, try to check its surface current distribution and uh, this is a third validation actually we performed over these things and what we found that at 3.5 gigahertz here if you see then mainly the surface currents are concentrated at this point correct or this point back here now the thing is at 3.7 you will find that the back csrr is actually carrying the large amount of the surface current correct it means what actually these two resonances this first resonance and the second resonance is actually uh, governed with the different structure one is this things another is the back side correct so so we have a flexibility here correct we have a flexibility you can you can you can change the things you can uh, you can uh, Make it wide band actually, but the thing is, when you are making the wide band, means like if you are shifting three point eight, three point nine, correct? It it may it may be the chance that you will be losing the uh, the phase difference between the orthogonal fields, correct? So you need to maintain actually, you need to maintain it still. So so many things, so many things, so many possibilities with the structure. You can carry out uh, the structure and you can do the simulations, correct? And uh, you can do some further innovation actually. How you can um make it wide band with wide cp and all the things correct so there is a lot large lot, large scope is there correct if you want you can carry out the things i i i'm ready to help you correct now uh the thing is uh, like uh, after that the circular analysis we perform and what we found that I initially i told you this things initially uh, this things i told you just a minute sorry so uh The thing is, like I told you, this uh, radius or the diameter of this ring actually is mainly responsible for the phase difference between the two orthogonal components. Correct, and these things we clearly actually uh, observe by this parametric analysis that when we are changing this R three, correct, when we are changing this R three, definitely there there must be some change in the matching as well because we cannot deny because we are going to join the two resonances. so definitely at some instance we are getting uh, the perfect matching now if you see the second curve here the graph you will find that we run the simulation from 6.75 7.25 like that in different numbers actually we kept uh, some set of numbers actually what we found that that at particular 7.25 correct we we are having a perfect you can say at this frequency 90 degree phase shift between these two orthogonal components correct so with this actually we are we are very much confident okay that this radius of the this uh, this radius from the ring actually providing the what uh, the 90 degree phase shift correct and later on uh, we we plotted the surface current and we have seen its uh, animated view and what we found that the things are still rotating actually right like this at 3.42 Fine, and it confirms that that yes, ah, there is a perfect circular polarization. Circular polarized waves are now existing with the structure. So finally, uh, if I if I if if I say the experimental results actually, so uh, the claim is that the bandwidth we got five eighty megahertz, fifteen point four four, are these things, and the CP bandwidth is seven point two five percent, and the gain is like this. And uh, mainly, we have the LHCP response here. The frequency is three point six. Gain is two point seven two. The gain is still I'm creating a problem. Radiation efficiency is greater than sixty three percent. Now, I, I I already told you these things that uh, when we are going to do this kind of things, the small antennas, correct? So we have we are going to check, we are going to get the low gains, correct? And radiation gains because. Because the thing is, gain and all this uh, is, is directly proportional to the a effective aperture area of the antenna. Correct. So means it is uh, means theoretically quite uh, justified as well. But uh, the thing is, we need to do some extra things so we can manage this gain and deficiency as well. So for that, further uh, we incorporated the AMC. Correct. So this is these are the some of the problems actually we face and we try to identify that how one can do. Uh, the circular polarization and what uh, particular thing they should be uh, keep uh, in in the mind that while simulating while uh, analyzing these structures correct what are the things 
you're supposed to carry out okay and what's supposed to you need to think uh, um, before developing this this kind of structures correct now we compare this thing i'll not read uh, this compare no? okay. and now after that after that uh, because the gain was the problem correct so however this is uh, not the focus the focus was how we can do the cp in the small antenna so i already told you but this is a one of the extra thing i am telling you this artificial magnetic conductor so here you can see this picture this is a pec perfect electric conductor and this is amc artificial magnetic conductor so it is a incident wave correct it is a incident wave the reflected wave like this correct this will be sorry uh, uh, this is a reflected wave sorry so uh, 180 degree phase shift is there correct whereas uh, whereas for p amc there is a zero degree phase shift so this is one of the thing but the thing is these are the not naturally occurring materials correct these are the engineered material or metal surfaces correct fine so the thing is like these are the two pictures actually you can see that when you have the pec you supposed to maintain lambda by 4 lambda by 4 at 2.4 uh, gigahertz is uh, is is pretty uh, good dimensions correct so the volume of the antenna will be very large correct we cannot accommodate so we cannot accommodate with if you are using the pec correct now the thing is like uh, with amc this this restriction is goes off and uh, below lambda by 4 the things are working but the thing is we supposed to maintain some sufficient gap so that the constructive interference must be happen correct so this is the idea actually and uh, then after what we did actually we performed the blast of analysis of this amc metal surface design correct this is a unit cell correct and we repeated uh, this things and uh, then after we found its reflection phase with frequency and what we found from 3.4 to 4 gigahertz we have uh, this uh, phase actually correct and we also analyzed the different uh, pi the incident angles correct the reflection phase with the frequencies correct it is quite uh, same actually correct and here the miniaturization is 30 now after that uh, we again performed uh, the equipment sample and this was really easy actually. and uh, the thing is uh, this this particular uh, overall thing will provide you the ic resonator and this is uh, this is very well known formula correct for this kind of things correct so we just modified here as per the structure correct and uh, further uh, we we find it out the w1 is the different height width and all the things we analyze this and what is actually happening correct so this is not actually uh, the point of focus i not uh, discuss so much here so the thing is uh, later on what we found that 5 cross 5 array is okay for this kind of applications what we are seeking here so finally uh, we fixed all uh, height and uh, uh, this gap between the antenna and the amc correct and uh, what we found that it is not going to affect my s11 and the gain and other things correct so finally we integrated like this correct we integrated like this and here you can see uh, the bandwidth is 16.36% and the bandwidth is around 12% correct now if you can see here because we we did not actually alter the antenna thing like we already i already told you that antenna design the complementary design and how we incorporate cp and other thing i just incorporate design this amc correct so this is amc what amc the benefits of amc are like you can see here with this the gain is around 5d correct and the reason is quite clear because when you are putting the amc you are you are going to play with the four field parameters because for this antenna the uh, radiation pattern is omnidirectional whereas for this antenna the 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 four field property will be somewhat directional correct and the thing is we taken uh, the uh, the unit cell 5 cross by 5 cross so that we can maintain the sufficient large beam width as well correct so this is the radiation that you can you can check here fine and uh, finally uh, this picture is really very really important actually because if you see what we analyze here we analyze the actual issue and the gain two things this is very 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 really important because this was the only thing uh the earlier designs or the existing designs are are uh, means, uh, not showing the good gain and other things 
so we address these kind of these things uh, and what we found that plus minus 45 degree correct below 3 degree we have the sufficient uh, bandwidth and we uh, we we actually we we have seen particularly for different phi correct and theta between plus minus 40 degree so this is one of the achievement i would say and this is one of the contribution in uh, the cp antenna small antennas we made and uh, finally the gain actually the gain also we checked plus minus 45 degree because to maintain the gain plus minus 45 degree correct like uh, you may claim the gain is uh, 10 degree at 00 but maintaining the gain over the beam width is somewhat a challenging task because your four fill uh, property should be much stable so that you should not you are not you should not uh, going to get variation in the four fill this thing is correct so th this is the thing and uh, finally uh, we have a 3.34 dbi again actually greater than average gain i'm, I'm saying here and plus minus 45 degree so this is uh, very uh, 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 very important work you can say for the space application and uh, the same uh, same work uh, we already means uh, we, are, we are already working for the, the isro actually the same kind of uh, requirements for them so these are the differences actually now so the thing is i have uh, given the overall idea actually that how you can incorporate the cp property now another thing is that uh, we published in 2019 again this things that uh, small antenna metamodal antennas and uh, with cp properties correct for the small satellite application actually now here you can see here the picture is quite clear we just uh, Uh, we just uh, we just uh, uh, taken the idea from the existing one, and what we found that if we put orthogonal these two unit cell, this is the unit cell of the meta material the structure. We put it orthogonal. Now for the phase, actually, this L inverted L. If you see, ah, uh, this is playing a very important role. So this is the overall uh, fabricant structure actually, and this is the cross sectional view you see. And uh, this is the overall antenna. This is the same kind of things, correct? And uh, we develop over the 45 by 45 mm square, correct? With the 3.36 lambda naught into 0.36 lambda naught at 2.5 gigahertz. Now the same thing uh, we performed. What we did actually, we first analyzed here uh, the metamodal unit cell, correct? The small antennas, and what we found that 2.4 Uh, this things regards this particular antenna is working. Now, uh, uh, this things uh, uh, we 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 also validated its ZOR frequency and we found 2.4 is this things and and uh, on the same basis we develop a equivalent circuit and we found a formula for that also. We can find it out and we develop we we uh, we also simulated over the areas and these are the LNC values. Correct. So you can also try this this with this value and. You can get almost same results, okay? Now, particularly we analyze the unit cell, and this is not ENG structure. This is a com this is a complete CRLH structure, correct? Right? Because there is a series gap in it. Now, the thing is, uh, further we measured and all the things, and uh, here if you see, uh, we did a innovation here. We put it these two uh, unit cell, same unit cell, orthogonally, correct? Right? And this. Pad actually small pad here if you see a uh, metallic pad. This is actually what this is a virtual ground. Correct again because ground plane is very small here. So we we have we have incorporated the uh, this things. Correct. Now we put it in a orthogonal way like that. Now one thing is clear that because uh, these Z this will provide a Z over uh, field. This is providing the Z over field. So I am going to get the orthogonal field component. This is quite clear from the structure itself. It is clear. Now how I will get Uh, this phase difference correct this is this was a challenge actually and particularly this inverted l shape playing a very important role correct and uh, the thing is if you see the simulations actually so between the gap uh, these two same unit cell correct what we found that if we are uh, maintaining such a way that it is a capacitive this is capacitive coupling is there correct And if you are maintaining the this gap in a such a way, correct, so that uh, at particularly p is six mm this distance, correct, between these this distance. 
So we are getting a acceleration receiving. It means what? That this particular thing, this uh, gap between these two units in a systematic way. Correct. If you see, this is a capacitive coupled with this inverted L shape. Correct. It is not directly coupled because the feeding is different for these two. Or some other feeding we put it. So we we got uh, such a very nice uh, response actually in this axial ratio and uh, sufficient bandwidth as well. Correct. And later on uh, the equivalent circuit uh, we performed. Correct. And uh, we clubbed we integrated this thing. I'll not go to this detail. Correct. Because I want to discuss with you, correct? So we have time also. Now, so uh, later on, uh, we designed the AMC actually, same way, correct? And uh, uh, we designed and uh, particularly uh, centered around 2.5 gigahertz. And then after we incorporated these two things, antenna as well as this. And finally, if you see, the gain is directional coming over the experimental this things. So we got the bandwidth 32%, around 33% actually, as one one. And uh, the actual ratio is around 15.92. This is around 16% at 2.5. Ah. So this could be utilized in many applications because 2.5, this is ISOM band, correct? And uh, many applications fall in this band, correct? And we have the CP antennas, correct? A very small antenna. And the gain is also sufficient around uh, 5 to 6 dB. And uh, this is the radiation pattern, stable radiation pattern. And maximum is at zero zero, correct. So we compared these things in the previously published paper also, and we found it's really very small, correct. It's forty five by forty five into twenty two, and the actual ratio bandwidth and all the things are really very good, correct. You you can see this uh, this things. Uh, these papers are published two thousand fifteen seventeen, and uh, very recent papers are there. These are very recent papers are there. Correct. So, publish in different hydrotype uh, journals actually. So, you can you can think of uh, this kind of um, work actually is really very important, and you can club into the some uh, smart antennas as well. What actually we are doing? We are now we are developing the smart antennas with the help of the CP antennas and the small antennas. Correct. So, you can carry out the research in this area. Correct. Now, uh, just I want to show the result of this thing. This is one of the invited paper. Uh, in uh, USI Asia Pacific Conference held in New Delhi 2019. So, in this invited paper, actually, I presented a very uh, important outcomes. Correct. So, I, I just want to show the things. Correct. Because uh, these things uh, will providing you the idea of the circuit utilization as well. So, the thing this this was a structure actually, and uh, we try to maintain the uh, CRL antenna. This is a CRL antenna actually. And I, 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 you can see this thing so that this is a feed, then uh, there is a gap, and uh, then we have a, a very thin strip line, correct, which is LL, all the things actually. So mm -hmm. we developed this in 606 Roger substrate, and then the back side we put it the split ring resonator, correct. So idea actually this thing, and this is background plane we put it, correct, because uh, we we felt that uh, the virtual ground is. Uh, I think this is uh, this thing. Virtual ground is not there, so we need to we need to have a CPW background thing so we can maintain the gain and all the things. So, so this is overall structure. I'll not go through. This is uh, the circuit diagram, correct? And uh, these things. Uh, these are the this thing. These are the steps. I'll not go into. I, I want to show the some some of the very important outcome. So yeah, this is uh, you can see the final results actually. So. The thing is, this first one is ZOR, another one is the higher order mode. So these are triple band antenna. Correct. This is a triple band antenna. Correct. And uh, we analyzed the different uh, width and gaps and we found that this is particularly for ZOR validation. So we found that the first reason is ZOR. And finally, uh, we checked the gain and all the things, correct, uh, variation with different parameters. So it was there, these things. So here you can see this is for ZOR. This is due to the strip line, and this is the higher order. So sorry, we have the four four bands, almost four or five. You can see because this is also that's a student degree, correct? Now the thing is, uh, the challenge is actually uh, what uh, like participants just uh, <clears throat> what I want to uh, express here that like I have shown you the antennas with a single band and the CP properties, correct? 
So what we explained that yes, uh, the solution I told you that how you will handle this kind of situation, definitely you can come across the solution. But like if you see your mobile, you still have the four or five antennas. Now if you can design the four or five antennas and in the same structure with the CP properties, correct? It is really a very great work, correct? And further, you can do some sort of uh, smart antennas and all, correct? So definitely it is going to help to your uh, the future handle devices, correct? So what we did actually, uh, then after uh, bandwidth announcement and all, we incorporated uh, uh, some uh, splitting resonator kind of structure, correct? And the spiral structure as well, correct? So finally, uh, we, we maintain here this uh, 10 dB actually matching, and we claim that this is a four band antenna, not for distance. Now, this is the uh, innovation actually, and uh, this is a conference paper, correct? And uh, soon you will be getting uh, these things. One of the paper is going to publish, and uh, then I, I can share you the much details. I cannot share uh, other details right now. Because the things are in under uh, review, so but I'll, I I can uh, I can give you some idea that what actually we did. So what we did actually we designed the LP to CP, CP converter, correct correct. And uh, these are some of the well known formulas. Correct. Uh, we studied the theory point of view that how we can how we can decompose a linearly polarized wave into the uh, into the two components. Correct. So this is one of the thing, and we studied that. The phase and all the things, correct. Now, what we did actually, uh, this uh, back side we put in our refractor, which is nothing but uh, your uh, LP to CP converter, correct, at particular band, correct. So, when we integrated actually, so what we found, you will see here this is a S11, this is actual issue, correct, and uh, you can see this actual issue. AR with reflector. So you can see here at this band, correct? At this band, you are getting what? The actual issue as well as this thing. Whereas, uh, whereas if you see uh, these things, other bands are not having the CP properties, correct? Because the thing is, this reflector, this LP2 CP reflector, we designed such a way that it will be going to work between these frequencies. Later on, we already developed these things that for let's say tri-band antenna or quad-band antenna, how can we develop the LP to CP converter? Yes. So we found some of uh, very novel structures, novel ideas, correct? And uh, we developed actually these multi-band LP to CP converter and we integrated and sub surprisingly, we got a very good results so that we can make it uh, already given to you, correct? The results and all the things you will be soon uh, means, uh, having that paper also, correct? So this is the thing actually, correct? And uh, these are the radiation CP distance with the metal antennas, correct? So I'm not going to explain these things, all the things, this is almost the same idea, correct? We recently published these all in the papers. <coughs> so this is all about actually, Correct. I'll not uh, go in much detail. So uh, I would like to acknowledge my students, correct? particularly first student Muhammad Amin, who worked very hard in designing the CP antennas, and these two students work for the metal antennas. Correct. So thank you so much. Uh, and if you have a question, you can ask. I'm open for the question answers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, the question, sir.